missing in action for over a week. You have a mission. You need to explain the realistic CTR-75 and make it fun and interesting for people to watch, along with some other retro tech you still have yet to cover. So let's get started. This message will self-destruct. And welcome to IJDM number 050. Yes, the 50th special. Hope you enjoyed the intro, which was kind of paying a double homage to tapes in general because I guess the person who pretty much invented tapes just recently passed away so a little homage for him and including my friend uh, Patrick Magoon which I've been wanting to do for years and they'll be passed years ago I uh, just wanted to do that little homage to him from uh, the Prisoner series back in the uh, late 60s which is probably one of my favorite series of all time uh, even though it's very odd it is still pretty cool kind of like this tape recorder I found this, this thing is just not very big at all. It is just about the size of maybe three tapes and maybe double the width. So it is actually nearly almost like a giant Walkman kind of per se, but it is a tape recorder. It does have the record function. You have your stop, eject, rewind, record, play, fast forward, indicator light for record and battery, your microphone, tape counter, model number up here, speaker, on this side there is nothing on the bottom here you have your handy dandy volume control and on the side are ports for the power which takes looks like a dc 6 volt uh, earphones aux in which i've learned the hard way as long as and also microphone in along with the um the rem uh, thing too which i believe that's something to do with having the microphone start and stop uh, and you can use this with computers there was also a Tandy model made that's kind of a creamish color, beige color, that matched the Tandy uh, color computers and a few different of the uh, Tandy Radio Shack lines. So I guess they, maybe they redid this to look better with these. And this is probably more reminiscent of the era when they were using the, uh, the gray, silver colored uh, computers. This is a little damage when I got it. I don't know if it happened in the mail, but there's a little crack there. And this thing was DOA on arrival. As with a lot of these tape, rec uh, tape recorders, you do have to uh, basically replace the band inside. And you can see from this cutaway right here that it's working now. I've had to do a couple different adjustments with gears and stuff. I wish I could have showed you that video, but I had some problems filming it and there was a lot of cussing involved. And I try to keep these somewhat family friendly and not drop too many, uh, too many bad curse words in the, in the actual videos. So let's take a look at this. Well, uh, one thing I gotta say is really cool, and yes, a realistic from the day, along with complete dove noises in the background. What's really satisfying about this tape deck, and notice I am tightening the reels, when you put it in, you actually put it in, and you don't attach it to the door like some of the newer tape recorders or some of, like, some of the ones that attach it. You just lose something when you're just inserting that tape. It's just something about that click in and that, that feel of hard media, you know, just connecting with what it's going to be playing on. And then simply you just hit play on it as I bump the camera there. And I'm only going to let a few seconds of whatever's on this play, which I think it's either Phil Collins or Genesis. So it's just going to be probably five seconds of absolute horror video. So... And if you can hear it or not, uh, it's got a lot of wow and flutter. I suspect there was a cracked gear in there. I tried re-gluing and resetting, and it's just maybe something with the bands, but I've, I haven't really worked out the wow and flutter and the speed. I just, it either seems like it's playing real slow or too fast. So, oh boy, it's one of those things. It's just kind of a collectible item I thought would be kind of neat to have. And really, there's not much else to say about this other than the fact it does use... Uh, does use these uh, modern day, I guess you could say, double A batteries. Takes four of those in the battery compartment down here. I did put some new feet on it because the other ones were long melted away. But that in a nutshell is the realistic CTR 75. Again, there is a Tandy model that actually sells on uh, the auction sites for a lot more. Surprisingly, you can pick these up, you know, cheap enough for, I think I got this one for like 15 bucks or something. Yeah, yeah kind of neat. Nice piece to have. I don't intend on using it much because the audio isn't great, but uh, it just can kind of give you that feeling of nostalgia back in the day when you couldn't really afford something high-end and you just needed a tape recorder. And I'm not really even sure what these sold for. If you have any comments on that, be sure to let me know. 
The next thing, next thing we are going to cover on this video too, we're going to do kind of a double feature on this, and I never got back on this, and we're going to do a head-to-head -head on this camera with comparing it the Sony Mavica. And this would be the FD88 1.3 megapixel, which does stills and records movies on handy dandy floppy disk just like this one you just take the disc and you just and put it in you've seen it in some of my other videos and we're going to have a head-to-head -head with the gopro hero 8 so it's going to be the sony fd88 versus the gopro hero 8 the battle of the eights so let's get started take a quick look and i hope you enjoyed this video it's kind of one of those things the build up for it with the intro may not match the content but we'll try to make this as fun as possible and this is my GoPro, which recorded the GoPro portion, the Hero 8. And right now I'm recording on the FD88. Okay, so the first test we're doing is with my pool critters here. We're going to be doing a video first. And just kind of starting this video off now, I'm using the GoPro. So this is the GoPro Hero 8 that I'm using currently. And you can see my little pool critter chlorine dispensers. And... Uh, yeah, we'll just take 15 seconds of this video and then compare it with the FD88 and see how it does. And both do have audio. Okay, and we're on the FD88 recording. Look at that turtle go. Yeah, get some good video of this on the FD88. And coming up on 15 seconds about now. Still photo test. As you can see, Interestingly enough, the FD88 actually looks a little sharper than the GoPro. Possibly something with the lens, maybe a setting or two, I don't know. Just one of those weird things in the FD88 obviously is overexposed, but a surprising test there. I'm kind of wowed a little bit by this whole thing. Okay, and a quick other thing. I think this gives you a little more to handle on it. Like the media better that this size to be honest with you because those those cards are just so tiny they're very easy to lose and overall i gotta say I, there's a few things i do like better about this camera and surprisingly it's because it's easier to hold and it's just it's more comfortable the gopro is just kind of like a camera on a stick where this kind of gives you some meat and bones to hang on to and I like the media better on this, even though it doesn't hold as much. I mean, why would you want to record high definition video in 15 seconds worth is more than plenty. I mean, what more do you need? So I'm going to have to give it a thumbs up on, on its capabilities. As far as the photo goes, well, it could be a little bit better. But I mean, hey, if the picture's too sharp, then you, I mean, you're going to see every blemish, blister, pimple you had since you were like 12 years old. So... <laughs> I mean, I'd rather not see all that on my, when I take my photos, so <laughs> arguments can be made on either one, and I am doing this all in joking that obviously technology has improved over the years, and this camera's already seen its day, but it is fun for nostalgia purposes, and just reliving the, the vintage, you know, quality construction, so this camera is solid, I mean, unlike my, the other camera looks like it that I did a video on the 8mm. This one actually feels more solid than that camera. Of course, there's a lot less moving parts on the outside other than the, the where you put the floppy disk in. But that is it for now for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And we do have some updates coming up on the Amiga. I'm working on getting the video cable now. So that'll be featured in a future video. But for now, taking a little bit of a break for a couple weeks to regroup and take a look at upcoming videos. We'll see you next time on IJDM. Be sure to subscribe.